Hey, what's up guys? Back again with another video. This time I'm going to show you how to work with the JSP directive tags. Alright, so this is the last tag that I'm going to be showing you for the basic JSP tags that I've showed you so far. Um, the scriptlet tag, the expression tag, the directive tag, and then there's the declaration tag. And so this episode I'll show you the directive tag. So this one's a little trickier than the other ones just because it's different than the other ones and how it works and how it looks like. So we're just going to make a new project here and uh, we're going to make a new project, yeah. <laughs> and so make sure you select servlet, next, and then we'll give it a name. So we'll call it uh, JSP Directives Directives Tutorial. And so the reason I'm showing you a new project um, creation here is just because the example that IntelliJ gives you by default is a really good example of a JSP directive. Um, yeah, so you're not gonna be using them too often, um, you still will be using them a little bit just because we're going to be using them to use the more advanced stuff like the Java, I mean the uh, the JSP standard template library. Um, you need to use a JSP directive to use that. So it's good to understand the basics of what JSP directives even are, you know, the fundamentals are always important. So we're going to open this up here and as you can see it gives us a default servlet but it also gives us this index.jsp file here too, which is good. And so as you can see here, we have this weird tag at the top. You may have noticed, noticed this before. We haven't really addressed it yet. And uh, this is a JSP directive. So this is an expression, as you might know by now if you watched the previous episodes. But this one starts with a angle bracket, percent sign, and an and, or at, what is it, and, at, at symbol. And so there's three different types of directives that you can work with. There's page directives, there's include directives, and then there's tag lib directives. And the ones that we're going to cover in this episode are the uh, include directive and the page directives. Um, the, tag li the tag lib directives are going to be important for the standard template library, but we're going to wait for um, we're going to wait before we do that. Okay. So first things first, we have this example here, and this is obviously a page directive just because it says page right here, and this allows you to specify some basic information for the JSP page that applies to the whole page. Uh, basically so we can do a few things and so if you want to see what the options are you can do control space and these are all of the options you can use on a page directive so is expression language ignored you can say true and uh, it'll ignore expression language which I've showed you before um, error is it an error page um, import um, language session um, info extend so you can extend a certain class um, yeah, but you're not going to be using most of these whenever you're using JSPs, at least at the moment. Um, the one that you might use if you're going to be, well, the one that you might use is the import one here. So you can import a uh, Java class into your JSP file for use. So let me show you how this one works. So um, actually before I do that, let me show you these other ones. So we have this, we have these default ones here. So content type text HTML and then a character set of UTF-8. So this one makes perfect sense, right? This is a content type of HTML, and the page encoding is UTF-8, which is the Unicode table, whatever, 8. Um, so yeah, it's not very, not really too important. You don't, you don't actually need to have this here for it to work, of course, um, but you do, I mean, that's just what the example has. So it's, it's good practice to have it there, I guess, you know, but you don't have to is the point. So yeah, that's the first example of a page. Um, directive. So let me show you the um, one where you can import stuff. So let's say that, for example, let's go ahead and make a Java class here that we can use to import into our JSP file. So we're going to call this utility, utility. There we go. And let me, let me make my uh, side thing bigger. So hopefully y'all can see the screen bigger, uh, better. Let me see if I can make it bigger. So appearance, um, 18. Let's see what happens. There we go. So hopefully that helps a little bit. I know it's not perfect, but that should make the side stuff a little bigger for you guys for you guys anyway so we have this public class utility now and we're just going to add some simple stuff to it like a, a simple static method so public static do uh kill uh, what do we want to call this i guess kaboom public static string kaboom and it's just going to be a simple dummy method that returns kaboom like an explosion okay so there we go, now we have a simple utility class with a uh, utility method, a static method that returns a string. And so if we want to use this in our JSP, we can. So let's say that in our expression uh, thing here, we can do utility. And as you can see, it's popping up as a suggestion here. So we can do uh, import that by pressing tab. 
And as you can see up here, it imports it using a page directive. So uh, page directive opening tag page and then import equals me dot Cody Simpson dot JSP directives tutorial dot utility, which is just the path to that class file. So me dot Cody Simpson dot JSP directives tutorial dot utility. There we go. So that's what that's just one example of how you can use a page import um, directive right there. And, so, and then from there, now that you've imported it, imported it, you can use that class wherever you want within your uh, JSP file. So utility.kaboom. And now that should return kaboom into the page. So let's see what that looks like. All right, so here's our page. It says kaboom, exactly how we expected it to do because the kaboom method, if we cl uh, control click it, returns kaboom. So now it shows kaboom. There we go, pretty simple, right? And so that's how you can use a page directive to import a class um, into your um, page. Otherwise, what you could do, if you did not specify it as a page import, you could have done this. You could have done uh, me.codysimpson.jspdirectivestutorial.utility. And you could have done it like that if you don't want to uh, import it using a page directive. Um, and then dot kaboom. So that's perfectly valid. But of course, this is... Um, I guess harder to understand, especially if you're using this class more than once. It's a little tricky. I mean, just for organizational purposes, you want to, it's better to just, you know, make a import for it, just so you don't have to have all this in the front of it. Okay, so that's just the fundamentals of a page directive. So let me show you how to use an import directive, which is a little more cool, um, actually. So what an import directive lets you do is import a JSP file into another JSP file. If you've done if you've done web development with other technologies, you may have heard um, of something called fragments. This is pretty much the same thing, basically taking one part of a file and then including it into another file as like a sort of template type thing, so that you don't have to uh, copy and paste that same template into multiple files. So let's say, for example, you have. Let me pull up an example here. So let's go to um, cortex.dev.us. It's my website that I'm working on. So let me show you an example here. So as you can see, it's not a beautiful website. It's a little beautiful, but it's not too beautiful because I'm not good at design. But if you look up here, we have this um, this nav bar here, this menu, right? And this is just one single HTML page, as you know. Um, so if we go to the leaderboard, this is generating another HTML page, technically, right? And then we go to libraries, that's another HTML page. Um, I'm using React.js, so technically these are all one page in a way. But just for, you know, for the purpose of what I'm trying to explain here, this is, these are all three different HTML pages, okay? And so for each of these HTML pages, you're gonna need this menu at the top. So it would be a little annoying if you, have, if you would have to copy the code for this menu on each of the pages that you have for your web application. Um, that's just, uh, it's really bad in terms of reuse and just organization and all that. It's just better to have one single menu stored in a file and then you can reuse it wherever you want it and that's basically what i'm doing here in this technology stack that i'm using which is react so let me show you how you can do that for jsp files so first things first we're going to need a new jsp file so go to web app and then new jsp and we're going to call this header so this will be our our page header and we can get rid of all this junk here and we can put some custom junk so let's make a simple header so hr and we could say h1 welcome and then to my website very creative right so just a very very simple thing oops not a h1 tag i mean an hr tag which is just a divider so just a very simple uh thing of html inside of a jsp file and so now what i want to do is put that jsp file um this one here into my index file so how can i do that without having to copy the entire code and just paste it uh, up here, right? So to do that, we're going to use the include directive. I just said import a couple times before this, but it's actually the include directive. So angle bracket, percent sign, at, and then we have these three tags here, which represent the different uh, directive types. So include, which, you know, mm -hmm. stands for import, page, and then tag lib. So we're going to do include, and then as you can see, it's asking for a file to include. So header.jsp, there we go. And then we can make some space in there for order. So now if we relaunch this or just uh, update classes and resources, it should reload it. And then if we pull up our website, if we reload here, it should show it. There we go. So now we get welcome to my website. And then under that is kaboom. So here's the header that we included from the header.jsp file directly into our index.jsp file using a include directive. So let me show you one more example here. So let's say that your website has a footer. Most websites do. So JSP, we'll call it footer. 
and so we're going to make a simple footer here and we'll make another divider and we'll say this is the footer of the page uh, yo so now we will go back to index and go down to the bottom here and we'll make a new opening directive tag so angle bracket percent slide at include file footer and there we go so now let's reload this boom go back to our page and reload and now it says this is the footer this is the footer of the page yo good so that's just how you include a page and of course you can do this as many times as, as you want to I mean realistically you'd probably only want to do it a single time for something like this so just oops so let's reload this again and see what it does and boom there you go so let's go back reload and as you can see it pastes it put it as many times as you included it using the directive so there you go alright so that's the basics of JSP directives like I said they're different than the other ones so they're a little more tricky to understand in modern practice you're not going to be using them too much there's other things that you're going to use in place of these things but at a fundamental level it's good to understand them because they are still used um, in certain instances like for tag libs and stuff like that which we'll learn about like I said before so um, yeah if you have any questions about what I showed you today then make sure you ask me um, you can join our discord and you can ask me there I'll leave a link for that in the description below and then also I'll leave a code for all this stuff in the description below so you can check it out and bookmark it for future reference in case you want to come back to it later and view it. One more thing is that if you want to support this channel, you can become a member by clicking the join button below this video and you can become a member for as low as 99 cents a month. And you get some cool perks like early access to all of my new videos just like this one here. Um, you get a cool rank on my Discord server and also you get to see yourself on the screen like you see right now. So if you want to support me, then uh, feel free to join. And uh, if you don't want to support me, that's fine. Thank you for watching my video anyway. I appreciate it. And that's it. So if you like this video, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe and peace.